Hello and welcome to Quartz Light, your car brochure channel. In today's episode, it's the turn of the Morris Ital in this 1983 Austin Rover brochure series. <laughs> Hello and welcome back and course like if you don't know it, we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube looking at car brochures from around the world, the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, sometimes beyond that as well. So if you're interested in cars, car brochures, please consider subscribing. Anyway, we've been looking at this 1983 full range brochure for Austin Rover. Last week we had the Maestro, kind of like the most modern car in this brochure, particularly the MG Maestro. Today we've kind of like gone silver scale, we've gone for a very old fashioned design with the Morris Ital. So, grab a cup of tea and we'll have a look to see what this has got to offer us. So on this side is the, you know, the side we've already looked at and just for those who haven't seen it, that's the front cover for this particular brochure, full range brochure like I say. So that's the end of the Marshall. This is the Ital that we're going to look at today. So this particular car was launched um, in 1980. So it doesn't sound like it's a particularly old design, but really, let's face it, it's just really a facelift of the Series 2 Marina, really, isn't it? You know, Harris Mann design. Uh, let's zoom in on some of these images at the front and then we'll have a look at the range proper. So there are the kind of like range and one little image, I guess. I suppose we should talk about the Atel name that came from the Atel Design Studio. Inferring that they designed the car, of course, it was a Harris Mann design. I think another case of uh, Harris Mann not really getting the recognition he deserved. And let's face it, in the 70s, he did come up with some amazing designs and it must have been really hard for him to always have to compromise on his designs because of the budget constraints of BL. Um, sadly passed away very recently, so it's nice to see him gain some recognition in his later years, but like I say, sadly passed away, so. Um, and, and actually one of the great Harris Mann designs is coming next, actually, the Ambassador. Um, I always liked his really angular designs that he used to do. They looked amazing. A lot of the times it was like crossed out and said, no, you can't do that. But his designs were actually amazing. And like I say, I think he was a world-class designer. But because he was always compromised on his designs, he didn't get the recognition he always deserved, I don't think. Anyway, here is the Atel design. By this time, 1983, it was kind of like the revised, ranged, the final... Um, sales tactic to sell these very early uh, designed very elderly designed cars I should say so at this time we had really two trim levels and gone are the days of like L, H, L, H, L, S we've now just got either the SX or SLX strange little trim designations really for um, Austin Rover but there we go maybe they sounded a little bit more I don't know fancier I don't know I'm not sure why that would really tempt anyone but anyway two engine choices as well this time a 1.3 and um, a 1.7 so available as both saloon and estate as a 1.3 or a 1.7 very practical estate actually the saloons lasted until um, around about February 84. The estate lasted a little bit longer. I think that was the summer of 84. So another sort of like six months or so left for the estate. Um, and of course, the Montego arrived um, in April 84. Now, I don't know what you feel about the Montego, good or bad, but I think we all agree it was a huge improvement of the Italian. So certainly a, a step forward for Austin Rover. Sad to see the Morris name go though. This was really the last production car to, to wear that Morris badge or to be called a Morris. Um, although it could be argued there was a, a, a Metro van that carried that Morris name a little bit longer, but this is more of a traditional passenger vehicle. That was a van. So very sad to see the Morris name to go for sure. At the bottom here, the title, big car, small price. So 
Let's open the brochure up and see that range. So the base model or the first model in the range was the SL Saloon. Apologies, I think I might have called it the SX at the start. I'll have to go back and have a look. But the SL um, is your base model at this time. Um, this is kind of the center page. So we've got the color chart stapled in the center there in a really weird place. Um, we'll certainly come back to look at the colors and see what colors available for the Ital. But for now, we'll just kind of like pretend this isn't actually there. We'll zoom in on this image of this base model SL though. So really when we zoom in, it's, we can, there's no real design. I'm sure most people can see the Marina 2 in this. It wasn't a huge change really, was it? Even though it's a, carrying that Ital name. Although I think at the start, they was kind of like thinking of calling it the Marina Ital, but didn't. We've got a, you know, a modern Austin Rover badge on the front there, black grill, all that sort of chrome has kind of like disappeared. Although we do have a little bit around the windows and a tiny bit on those very traditional door handles. Very square design. Like I say, compared to the Maestro, a very old fashioned and kind of like a little bit out of place by this time. This brochure runs um, October, November, December 83. Like I say, just a couple more months to get a chance to purchase one of these at this time. So no doubt, huge savings. I'm sure it was a bargain. So, you know, when it says big car, small price, I'm sure it was, I'm sure it, there was some great offers when it was there, sat next to a Maestro. And I'm sure by this stage, there would have been word that the replacement is on its way. You can see on this version, no headrests, no door mirror, a pretty, plain car. I quite like the wheels though. They're a little bit interesting. I'm sure they're just wheel trims though, I would guess. Um, let's skip past that colour page because like I say, we'll come back to that in a moment and see a few more images of this SL. And here is that interior with those no headrest rests or even any holes to put a headrest in there. Door cards looks very plain, very ordinary. Tweed fabric upholstery. Bit of a side view of this particular model with that single stripe going down and a few more little images of that very basic radio showing that it's got a door pocket the luxuries and then at the bottom here that is the dashboard you're welcomed with the Austin Rover badge on the steering wheel very black, looks a bit cheap and nasty really, doesn't it? I must admit, but like I say, I'm not putting this car down. It's just by this stage, it's felt a little bit out of place, I think. Um, it's even got the, kind of like the thing I really didn't like the Marina for, this sort of like radio that's kind of like pointing the wrong way. Really bad design, I think that. Um, I always preferred the very first Marinas just because of the dash on these. So it's telling us the Morris Ital 1.3 SL, super value, proven durability, and all round practicality. The hallmarks of the Ital 1.3 SL. Neat, timeless styling and a classic three box saloon configuration appeals strongly to many private and commercial motorists. And I'm sure there were many traditional motorists who still like that very boxy design who appreciate the roomy interior and large boot space. Light and easy to drive, the 1.3 SL is powered by a lively and efficient a engine and has a positive remote control gear change. Precise rack and pinning steering and front and rear anti-roll bar make for stable cornering. Servo assisted dual line brakes provide excellent stopping power. Interior features on the 1.3 SL are comprehensive and well balanced, attractive and comfortable tweed fabric seat facings and fully reclining front seats, a push button LWMW radio, cigar lighter, console mounted clock are all standard. Tidy storage space is provided with a lockable passenger glove box and parcel shelf plus rigid door bins at the front all sounds very posh doesn't it you can take for granted such thoughtful touches as 
rear grab handles, a two-speed heater fan, coin tray, glove box and boot lights. Ital's styled headlamps are powerful halogen units, while the handsome rear lamp cluster incorporates twin rear fog guard lamps and reversing lamps. Adding the final touch of refinement to the Ital, there's a comprehensive acoustic installation insulation pack. And I think, you know, when these SLs and SLXs came out, they kind of like added a little bit more of that sort of sound deadening material. Using specifically applied and selected materials throughout the car to achieve smooth and quiet running. And you can also get such optional extras as black paint or metallic paint or even a laminated windscreen. And then we have a little bit look at uh, the manual uh, 1.3 the fuel economy. Nothing really out of the ordinary to be honest. So like I said at the start, just two trim levels. So essentially this makes it the top of the range Ital, the SLX. A little bit more chrome treatment, headrest, even an armrest. Let's have a look at these pictures. So there we go, a big zoom in there on the front face of this top model. So you can certainly see these extra sort of like chrome little bits to sort of brighten it up and it does look a little bit nicer. If we tilt the uh, camera as well, we kind of get this little bit of a beauty chrome ring on the wheels and we've got actual rubbing strips on there rather than just a stripe. Interior wise also looks a lot nicer with those headrests on them seats. Seats look a lot nicer and like I said at the start though we've got these nice sort of like armrests on there as well. Interior same sort of thing though does look very cheap and plasticky. Again that radio that faces the wrong way which I don't know why I just couldn't live with that. I don't know why it just seems like a bad design like I say I always preferred the original Marina and I do like marinas, uh, contrary to popular belief, a lot of people absolutely hate them, worst car ever built, but you know, I don't think they were that bad to be honest with you, particularly, like I say, the first generation, the first ones look the nicest in my opinion, although I know a lot of people prefer the second, but we've all got our own personal views, but like I say, when you watch things like Top Gear and that, worst car ever built, absolute nonsense, in my view anyway. And then we've got this little booted area there. And because it's a very traditional design, not a bad sized boot, to be honest. So as it says, instead of just been having to have the 1.3 on that base model, we can now get the 1.3 or the 1.7. Says for the 1.3 SLX, the power is a 60.8 BHP A plus unit, as you do in the 1.3 SL while the 1.7 SLX has a punchy all-series alloy head engine developing 77 bhp. Yeah, not huge figures there are they, they sound very low, certainly by today's standards. External uh, recogniz recognition points of the SLX are the side rubbing strips with bright inserts, two door mirrors, wheel trim rings and bright strips highlighting the upper and lower edges of the radiator grille. Extra luxury features abound inside the SLX models. Full instrumentation includes tachometer, there's an intermittent screen white facility and tinted glasses fitted all round. The rich upholstery has velour fabric centre panels, I like a bit of velour and ribbed velour borders and there's a front head restraints not to mention a folding rear center armrest all fours have velour trimmed casings and a vinyl top roll to complete the tasteful and inviting interior like all the towels the slx model have the painstakingly developed acoustic installation pack giving quietness to match the interior comfort Ital SLX saloons offer an attractive combination of dependability, simplicity with luxurious yet practical equipment. In brief, real value for money. And this is really how and they were selling the Ital at this time. Value for money, simplicity, 
you know it's things that you know a lot of people would have actually valued you know coming out of the 70s they still wanted these very traditional basic forms of transport they were good value for money and i think in today's car market i think that's kind of like missing actually you know cheap cars that aren't overly complicated but of course we have to have all this safety equipment on now don't we so it's kind of like taking these sort of cheap cars off the market sadly uh, optional extras we could have metallic paint black paint um what else can we have on there laminated windscreen tinted of course to match the other glass so not too much in the way of optional extras to be honest even on this top of the range one and there is a sort of look at how the 1.3 and the 1.7 compares in regards to miles per gallon again nothing really out of the ordinary okay so here is your estate as promised differs in some ways yes you can still get as an sl or an slx the difference really is the 1.3 now can be had uh, as a 1.3 or a 1.7 the slx now only comes as a 1.7 so weird how they kind of like change that around we'll have a look at some of these little images top image i think is the slx this metallic one the SL is this more traditional sort of beige um, ivory sort of colour. So we'll certainly have a look at these images. So here is the interior. And here it's showing with the seats folded down to give a very practical interior. Quite a low lip as well actually for an old fashioned car. Not much difficulty lifting objects in there. Although they've kind of like stood the spur wheel at one side. Giving that lower uh, floor level but kind of like make a bit of intrusion into the cabin lots of wheel arch intrusion and i don't know what this is that a fuel filler intrusion as well so lots of intrusions but still a very practical estate i preferred the estate i think the it suits being in the estate it looks more traditional it kind of like suits the car i think a bit more so i do favor the estates as being a bit of a workhorse really it also shows the image there of the seats folded up not a split seat though it's either up or down and then with that um, hatch i guess we call it tailgate uh, closed um, it gives us a nice idea how these were badged because we never really saw any rear shots before so there is that morris badge like I say, sad that that's going to be going now. Um, it's showing the Atal badge on there. It tells us the engine size on the back. And in red, SLX. Looking a little bit fancy. I do quite like that in red on that metallic blue. Nice chrome um, finished bumpers. And we can just um, really make out how the estate differs. It's got the more traditional rear end where reversing lights have been kind of like tacked on as a bit of an afterthought in the bumper and we've also got a bit of a fog light just also tacked on as an afterthought but tail lights i mean fog lights at this time were very often just tacked on as they became more of a legal requirement we do have a rear wash wipe though here is an image of the um, sl estate although this one's showing um two um door mirrors on this particular one um like i said i think the sl saloon only had one but still looking very plain um and like i said the metallic one is your top model you know showing those rubbing strips rather than a stripe we can't see the front but again it would have added them um, two sort of chrome strips just brighten it up a little bit and this is also um tinted glass as well I quite liked how it kind of like stepped up in the design actually that small little window for the uh, for the tail I don't think it was a particularly bad looking estate overall to be honest with you like I said a bit of a workhorse oh well, there we go it's kind of like confirming here three models available so you get 1.3 SL 1.7 SL and that 1.7 SLX top model uh, I'm not going to read through all this. We'll just pick a few little key points out on here, I think. Um, it's kind of that it has got uprated suspension. Um, and it's also saying the rear wash wipe is standard on all versions and 
two door mirrors and a load space lamp are standard on all versions so you know i don't know why at this time they always kind of like made you have that extra um passenger door mirror on the estates i've seen that in a few different models not just british leyland um but yeah not much more to see there we can get optional extras but same as the saloon so we're talking about paint as much as anything and there are the fuel economy kind of figures that may just you know be slightly down on the saloon okay so back to the colors for the ital so the colors you could get you could get iron white you could get black you can get that rattan beige which we saw on that lower spec model you get silver leaf metallic you couldn't get cinnabar red for your atal um, you could get cashmere gold though and you could get monza red um, you could even get that aporto red like a really good choice of colors actually primly yellow you couldn't get for your atal but you could get that opaline green metallic and that zircon blue metallic which like i've said previously really reminds me of this time period that zircon blue metallic was actually shown on um, that top of the range slx you could also get eclipse blue which is that you could also get clove brown i can't think clove brown is really the color to get very much a 70s color and this feels more like a 70s car so i think that clove brown is probably the color that suits this atal most uh, moonraker blue metallic you couldn't get though as usual um, these are the specifications for the atal um, we'll go through it pretty quickly i'm not going to say too much um, but as always you can pause the screen if there's anything you really want to have a look at starts off with the sl model the 1.3 which is a 1275 cc with a four speed synchro mesh uh, transmission steel wheels with uh, full hubcaps that's your electrical information your instrumentation information for this uh, SL model and the interior features and your body features before we move on to the SLX choice of that 1275 or uh, indeed and exactly apparently 1700 cc same four speed a transmission wheels and tires same thing hubcaps we've got them sort of trim rings or beauty rings on there that's your electrical for the slx sorry about the uh, camera moving around a little bit there instrumentation and interior features can i get it all in there in one just a bit about again apologies for the camera wobbling a little bit around there moving down body features tinted glass like i say on the slx and then the estates so 1.3 sl 1.7 sl 1.7 slx same engine choice as the saloon same gearbox as the saloon similar sort of idea for the wheels and tires the sl having hubcaps and then trim rings that's the electrical continuation there instrumentation for the estates so you can see the slx there is adding um, a tachometer warning lights for chalk and handbrake so it wasn't really a luxury car even if you got the top model it wasn't full of equipment it was very much a base vehicle that was available at a very cheap price at this time body features uh, 
and then that is the full list there for the specifications for the Morrissey town. Next week we're going to be looking at the Austin Ambassador, another Harris Mann design. One of my favourites actually, one of these Anglia designs that really makes me think of Harris Mann, so certainly that one will certainly have to um, dedicate really that to Harris Mann. I think that was one of his favourites as well actually. So there we go, that is the Morris Ital. Um, I really kind of like to think about Marinas and Itals as being very much a quarter light car, a very ordinary car. Um, and by this time, a very cheap and affordable car too. But let me know in the comments what you think about the Morris Ital. Um, please do like and subscribe, and we'll see you very soon. All the best. Take care.